All right, hey everybody, this is Dr. Hagmeyer with the Naperville Institute for Neurometabolic Solutions. And uh, I wanna talk to you today about something that is uh, you know, a very common problem. I'm getting a lot of different emails about it when I talk to people all over the country. People are having a lot of questions about certain foods that are potentially um, gluten, uh, gluten containing substances that are, that are problematic. And so today's video, I wanted to shoot just a quick video, again, talking about gluten sensitivity, cross-reactive foods, and uh, like I said earlier, a big problem that I'm seeing more and more is um, people asking about coffee and how it relates to gluten sensitivity. So just a great video. This is a short video. I'm going to kind of explain a couple of things to you here today. But one of the things that I want you to realize is that cross-reactive foods, um, if you're eating these foods, are a lethal combination for people that either have a known gluten sensitivity or they suspect that they have a, a known gluten sensitivity, okay? So if you have autoimmune conditions, uh, fibromyalgia, diabetes, if you suffer with chronic pain, if you have dementia, if you have thyroid problems, then skipping coffee could really be the very next step for you to take your health to the next level. And that's really what we're all about here in our office. Um, again, a lot of people don't realize that uh, coffee uh, contains a protein that cross-reacts with gluten antibodies. In fact, 10% of coffee contains a protein that once in your body, um, essentially can cause all the same havoc and destruction that gluten can. So that means those morning trips to Starbucks or Caribou Coffee or to Dunkin' Donuts, even though you're not eating gluten-containing uh, foods, you could be getting them through drinking them, okay? So again, I, I felt that it was time to shoot a video um, on this particular topic. Now, uh, for those of you who don't know what gluten is, I'm just gonna give you a quick 10-second version. There's a whole lot more information on my website about gluten. But gluten is really a protein, and it's the protein that's found in all grass-bearing seeds. So if you are consuming wheat, if you are cons consuming rice, if you are consuming barley, if you are consuming oats, anything that comes from a grass-bearing seed is going to contain this protein, and it's the protein, as well as the lectins, which I haven't, I'm not gonna talk about too much in this video, I'll save that for another video, but it's the proteins that are found in all grass-bearing seeds that cause this problem, okay? So again, you can check out my website, www.drhagmeyer.com. There's a lot more information about sensitivity testing that we, that we use in the office. There's a lot of great gluten-free recipes. Um, one of the reasons why I put this website together was that I, I was coming across a lot of websites that were basically touting um, their recipes to be gluten-free. And the sad reality of, of all of that is what was that these foods and these recipes were not gluten-free. And so uh, the website that we put together on the far right-hand corner is truly a gluten-free recipe, okay? So again, there's a lot of great information on my website. You can, you can visit that. But the big thing that I want you to know uh, as part of, of understanding gluten sensitivity is that the majority of the tests that people are having done today, uh, it really misses up to 70% of those that are tested. And here's what I mean by that. So let's say you suspect that you have a gluten sensitivity. Maybe your doctor is a so-called progressive doctor and they decide, well, yeah, you know what? You're, you know, you're having some problems. Let's test you for gluten. And they test you for one fraction of gluten. And that one subfraction of gluten sensitivity here is the one that you see here in red. It's called alpha gliadin. And um, the problem with alpha gliadin is it, it is the one that's obviously the most studied subfraction of gluten. However, you go into your doctor, he tests you, and they tell you no, that you're, you don't test positive for gluten sensitivity. And I see this a lot. And the biggest problem with that is, is that uh, what they're really saying is that you test negative for alpha gliadin. But the reality of it is, is you could test positive for beta gliadin, you could test positive for gamma gliadin, you could test positive for glutenin, and you could test positive for a lot of these other subfractions of gluten. And this is one of the number one reasons why people continue to get sick uh, despite eliminating or trying to eliminate um, gluten, okay? So there's, these, there's a combination of many different proteins uh, at hand here, and um, we'll talk about that here in just a little bit. So again, the key, the key, uh, the key ingredient here is this alpha gliadin, okay? This is the main protein fra uh, fraction that most doctors are familiar with and they test for, but again, it's, it's not the only one, and that's the clear distinction. Uh, one of the big things that I, that I hear over and over, and it's a, it's a common misconception, I, I hear this almost daily, is uh, people that say, well, I don't have a gluten sensitivity because I don't have any bowel or stomach problems. I don't have any gas, I don't have any indigestion, I don't have any constipation, I don't have any diarrhea. But here's the reality. 
gastrointestinal sy sy uh, symptoms are the least common presentation of a gluten sensitivity, okay? And that's very, very important. So I want to say that again, in case you missed it. Uh, gastrointestinal symptoms are the least common presentations of a gluten sensitivity or insensitivity. The most common presentation, as you can see here, are neurological symptoms, and that is so important. So again, it's not the digestive, it's the neurological. So if you're suffering with migraines and chronic headaches, if you're suffering with vertigo and dizziness, if you're having problems, uh, maybe you have a, a child at home with seizures, or you have seizures, or you have epilepsy, or you have multiple sclerosis, or you have Parkinson's, or you have depression, or you have neuropathy, which is uh, damage to the nerves in your feet or hands. Maybe you have ataxia. Um, ataxia is clumsiness in the hands and in the feet. Uh, maybe you have balance and vestibular problems, coordination issues. Or maybe you have, or you have a child at home with ADD and ADHD. And maybe you're just simply taking Ritalin or Adderall or some of these other uh, very powerful medications. And one of the, the true causes of your problem could be in a gluten sensitivity issue. Okay, so very, very important. So again, the first common uh, presentation is neurological. The second most common presentation of gluten sensitivity are hormone problems, uh, meaning problems that affect your endocrine system or problems that affect your immune system. Again, that's very, very important. So here's the connection of how gluten problems um, could relate to things like infertility, how they could relate to problems with thyroid, okay? And of course, um, our autoimmune uh, disorders that we see very common. So here's what happens. Basically, your immune system thinks that gluten is an invader, okay? You ingest some gluten, you drink some gluten, and uh, your body begins to uh, identify that gluten. It begins to attack it. And then what begins to happen is your body starts to make all these antibodies. And your immune system will now attack tissues that are similar in structure to gluten. And that's something that's very, very important. Gluten, again, is a protein. Bacteria and viruses are, are proteins. And the, the structures of our body, our glands, muscles, and tissues are proteins. And so what happens is our body can mistakenly begin to attack other glands and tissues of the body. And this is how these autoimmune conditions develop. So these are just some of the body parts that can be affected by autoimmune diseases. Um, they can affect the brain, okay, which we've talked about. These are the neurological symptoms that develop. It can attack the spinal cord. It can attack the thyroid, causing Hashimoto's. Uh, when your immune system attacks uh, the, the joints of the body and destroys the joints of the body, we call that rheumatoid arthritis. Your immune system can attack your pancreas and cause diabetes, blood sugar problems. It can attack the intestines, leading to things like celiac disease and Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis. It can attack the ovaries and cause things like infertility, menstrual cycle irregularity. So again, there's many, many different presentations uh, of an autoimmune condition. And the most important thing is identifying the actual causes of what's stirring or keeping the immune system in this mode of attack. So once your immune system has lost this ability to determine what belongs to the body and what's an invader, basically your whole body can become breakfast. Okay, so that's where your immune system will now attack things like the joints, your nerve system. It'll attack things like your intestines. It'll attack, again, like your pancreas. So basically everything on the body, uh, in your body rather, becomes uh, you know, fair game for the body to attack, or the immune system to attack. Um, it's really interesting to note that there's not a single disease or health condition that you, can't th uh, that you can think of that doesn't have an association or can't be tracked back to some sort of problem with gluten sensitivity. So that's what the research is showing. So this is how epidemic this problem is, and I think people aren't realizing just how serious this really is. Um, this is why it's also so important to be educated about gluten sensitivity, and if you have a gluten sensitivity issue or suspect that you have a gluten sensitivity, it's so important to get the proper testing. That, again, is, is really uh, a key component here that I wanna make, uh, make, make sure that you're, you're aware of. Last year, new information from an independent research laboratory was released. And what they found was that many people who go on a gluten-free diet don't get any better. They fail to improve. And so the question was, why is this happening? Why are people going on a gluten-free diet, uh, buying all these gluten-free foods, and not having any resolution or having improvement to their symptoms? And one of the problems that we found was related to this thing here called cross-reactivity. So again, we're gonna spend some time uh, talking about cross-reactivity. When you have a gluten sensitivity, your body is going to make antibodies, okay? And these antibodies are like strobe lights, and your immune system makes these little antibodies, these strobe lights, 
uh, to help identify these invaders. Um, and it's these strobe lights that become really important in identifying cross-reactive foods. And so when you're, cross, when you're eating these foods and you're, cross, you're, you're having this cross-reactive reaction, it's like these strobe lights are going off trying to indicate to your body that, hey, we've got a problem over here. And that's where your immune system is going to send uh, certain types of cells called B cells to basically try to, try to attack them and, and neutralize them. And that's really where the trouble starts. And for a lot of people, um, if you're familiar with autoimmune conditions, maybe you have an autoimmune condition, this is where we start testing antibodies, right? We test antibodies against certain tissues. Like in the thyroid, we test uh, something called thyroid peroxidase enzyme, or we test for something called thyroglobulin. Okay, this is just an example of antibodies that we look for. So if you're on a gluten-free diet and you specifically search for the label that says gluten-free and you start to look at the ingredients, most likely you're going to find things that, uh, or ingredients that is, that are things like tapioca or sorghum or buckwheat or arrowroot or quinoa or things like corn. And all of these things, as well as other things that we test for, can cause the same problem as gluten. So if you're ingesting these foods, these foods alone can be a part of your problem, and they could be part of that, that uh, issue in terms of why you're not getting truly better, okay? We could add coffee to that as well. So coffee was also tested uh, through this research laboratory. This was an independent research laboratory, no affiliation with pharmaceutical drugs. And what they found was that coffee, milk, eggs, chocolate, yeast, millet, soy, rice, potatoes, sesame, were all highly reactive, okay? And so that's, uh, that's just uh, a couple things that I want you to be aware of. So here's a couple of takeaway points from today's video. One is that if you're on a gluten-free diet and you feel a little better, but maybe not as well as you could be or should be, or maybe you've hit a plateau, not only do you need to give up coffee, like we started this video out, but you also need to get tested for all these cross-reactive foods, uh, again, that could be contributing to your sickness. Now, if you suspect that you have a gluten sensitivity or you want to be properly tested for a gluten sensitivity, um, contact my office for a free phone consult. Uh, we do phone consults on Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Uh, but it's real important. If you suspect that or you have questions, give our office a call. Uh, we'll talk to you a little bit about the kinds of uh, tests that may be very helpful in uncovering uh, really where your problems could be starting from. And then most importantly, we'll set a course uh, for correcting this problem. I'm Dr. Hagmeyer. I hope you uh, found this video helpful. And if you did find it helpful, please share it with someone that may not be getting better. They're suffering with some chronic health problems. And uh, maybe the, the, the doctors that they're seeing are really just continuing to, to put these, these individuals on more and more medications. There are obviously real answers and real solutions as to why we get sick. And very rarely, if ever, does the, does the answer lie in taking more medications. Well, I hope you enjoyed my video. Take care.